And we have another question in the audience. Oh, sorry. Yeah, again, not so much uh, a question, but a statement that I'd love to hear the panel react to. Uh, I certainly don't disagree with the statements that have been made about the relative likelihood of going ca truly cashless anytime in the near future. I like to say the cashless society will be long, will be along shortly behind the paperless office. <laughs> and wireless <laughs> connectivity. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I do think that if you view the issue globally and you acknowledge the fact that 85% or so of retail transactions continue to take place in cash, you have to acknowledge that cash is not accomplishing the goal of financial inclusion for most of the world. Sure. That there needs to be a move beyond cash in order for the vast majority of people in the world to become full working participants in and beneficiaries of the economic system. And so I think that's, I'd love to hear your thoughts on cash. Yes, it's ubiquitous. And yes, it, it enables transactions at a very basic level. But it's also an impediment to full participation in the benefits of the economy. Well, I, I, and I think you mentioned this with the example of Kenya. Actually, in Kenya and also in India, where they've uh, done this state by state, and they're not that far along, the amount of cash circulation in those uh, areas that get ATMs, POS, and you know, like an M-Pesa-like device has been going up because you're bringing people into the economy. So they, they, the, the consequence of what the Reserve Bank of India is doing, like in the Delhi state, is that uh, cash uh, in circulation, the Delhi state is going up, but you have a lot more people in, included in the economy because they're, they're actually getting cash when they go to top up their phone, to the place where they would top up their phone. So the two things can go together and actually go together in a developing country because you, now you're uh, getting people who can borrow $10 to get a sewing machine uh, in a micro payment or a, a micro lending sort of arrangement, which requires cash but it also brings them into the economy. So they go together in a developing Yeah, country. although I do think that uh, ca the cost of cash is highest on those people that are on the fringe or just come in. And the inability to move cash easily, you've got to give it to somebody to trans transport it to where right. it's got to go to. You have to store it somewhere. And the risks to you and the risk in transport and the delays in transport transporting it are, 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 are most expensive for those least able to pay for it. And for people like us, it's like, you know, nobody's, it's unlikely I'm going to lose the cash in my pocket. I can transfer it in or out anywhere I like. The, these people can't. And I think uh, there, is, there is a gap between just saying, well, cash is the right solution for a lot of the, these individuals. Yeah, I think just to add to that, you know, um, there is an economic and political dimension to, to this whole debate. and. Um, you know, I think a lot about the informal sector, and uh, or some people call it the shadow economy. And the reality is that people living in dire poverty can only form a bridge to wealth creation through the informal sector. If you and, and in some countries, the informal sector is 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 equivalent to about 25 percent of the the GDP of of, of a country. In in the U.S., I think it's about nine percent. But you'll be surprised how big the informal sector is in, in European countries. And um, if you try to stamp out, I think it would be political suicide to stamp out uh, the informal sector. And the informal sector uses cash ex almost exclusively. And uh, you're going to take away their ability to, uh, to get involved on, on the economic ladder and, and to, to get involved in uh, wealth creation, you're going to create incredible uh, a recipe for social chaos. Why wouldn't so, you just change the tax structure if that's what you wanted to achieve, as opposed right. to encouraging a, a shadow economy? Right. Well, it's 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 easier said than done. True, but right now we have a shadow economy that uh, you can't tell between fraudulent and non-fraudulent that doesn't contribute to society in a constructive way. 
And the ability to incentivise those people, be it with constructive incentivisation, would seem a more progressive way than saying, let's leave this because this is good for people to work in the shadows and not pay tax and not contribute and not, be, not track their payments um, in order to allow them to prosper whilst right. the rest of society does pay. Well, I, th I think it's, as I say, it's a bridge between abject poverty and uh, wealth creation to get onto the economic ladder. And cash is vital in, in that process. But even, even there, Mike, if you look at many of the emerging market studies, they say that the minute you can offer a banking product to someone, they actually save. And they actually have the ability to put money away for right. the issues that come up in their lives. And there are also cases where when somebody's widowed, etc., that that family keeps the cash as opposed to it going to the brother of the right. family, etc. And uh, that, you know, those studies are, are alluding to the fact that getting people into a structured system is more protective and constructive than allowing an unregulated cash flow to occur. Yeah, I mean, as I say, that's, that's the, the ideal on paper, but, but the reality is, is, is very different for people struggling to, to exist on less than $2 a day. I agree. I, the only other observation I would make is that if you have to walk half a day to get paid, or you have to walk a day to pay the person that is providing the service versus being able to text it to them straight away and keep working or keep looking after the person that you're looking after, etc. Uh, the frictional costs are massively reduced and so the difference between getting paid today and tomorrow may be that I can't buy food today but I, you know, I have to wait till I get the money and if we can move that money right straight away then people have access to it to do something with it right now. So right at the subsistence level the importance of having lower friction, cash when I've earned it is absolutely critical and if that's, you know, the physical movement of things is rarely as efficient as the digital movement of things and the adoption of mobile is, is the most prevalent distribution mechanism we have in these markets. Sure, but I mean the, you know, the cash out, the, 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 the global infrastructure of ATMs is a great way to move money around. Uh, you know, I, I think person-to-person -person money transfers uh, are becoming more and more popular. Remittances, uh, which poor people can, can send the money and with their mobile uh, account can have access to um, the ATM industry. Or the agency and network from the MNOs, which is sure. far broader Absolutely. than the, that. I don't or think the you guys are disagreeing with no, each no, other. No, no. <laughs> no, I, I, <laughs> saying it in different ways. There's not a conflict between financial inclusion and cash. And at some point, a country like Kenya, which is the one that's taken off in this area, will have a lot more of its payments electronically and cash will decline. Uh, that's clear. And that's what's happened in developed countries. I mean, if you went to the U.S. in 1850, you know, there were 20,000 different banknotes in circulation, and they all circulated at a discount. It was a mess, and it was all cash. And that's kind of the situation you have in developing countries. But I mean, the, the good news for, for the ATM industry is that RBR is predicting a growth rate in volumes of cash withdrawals between 2011 and 2017 to average 7.9% per year. Uh, now, if you compare that to what the World Bank has worked out as the average GDP growth uh, between 2003 and 2011, it was 2.7%. So average global GDP is below 3%. But the volume of cash withdrawals up to 2017 is pre predicted to be 7.9%. So I think we're ending on, on a positive note these are all complementary technologies. They're beneficial to society. Um, but you know, we have a huge unbanked and, and poor population in the world. And cash is, is still king in, in, in most countries of this world.